Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. It's good, good stuff. And uh, I don't know any better way to, to teach uh, newcomers and young people than to bring the people who've been here a long time and have them stand up here and interact with each other. It's beautiful. Watch the way these people interact with each other because they've known each other all these years. There's several, I don't know how many uh, groups uh, are represented here in the old timers, but at least six or eight different groups of Alcoholics Anonymous are uh, represented with the old timers here. So interacting with, with each other, there's tremendous unity. Uh, the, the fun things that they know about here, some of them have been married and divorced, and some of them are going to get married and divorced, and some of them are probably some of them are questioning their sexuality at this point, <laughs> or even if they have any. <laughs> I talked to a couple of people. We weren't certain what we were. Uh, the change, you know. But uh, but it's great, and I love them, and, and these people have been in my life since uh, I came, and before. Uh, Mario brought me pictures of me when I was going in and out of AA. I was standing there. I sponsored one guy, and I'm holding a cup full of whiskey. <laughs> so back in the old days, if you had the willingness to help, it didn't make any difference whether you were sober or not. <laughs> Plumber Jim, thank you guys. All the people who are about to have 30 years to come to support. So please, ha- please have a good time and enjoy the meeting. Ruben's going to come up. He's got the list. He's going to start with the people with 30 and go on up to uh, 53. Thank you. Alcoholic Ruben. Yeah. Clean and sober since April the 2nd, 1985. I'm grateful. And let's thank Keith and Sue for uh, sharing this thing. Yeah, without their example, we wouldn't have what we have here today. Thank all the old-timers that are here. Please turn off your cell phones if you can. And kicking it off this year is Al V with 30 years. Come on up. Where's Al? There he is. I, my name is Al, and I'm an alcoholic. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I am a newcomer. July 2nd is my 30th birthday. And I, I see a lot of familiar faces that I've seen over the years, but I don't remember the names. And I remember in my first month of sobriety, my sponsor, uh, well, the guy, he, he decided he was going to be my sponsor. I didn't want one, and I tried to fire him a few times. He says, you can't fire me if you didn't pick me. <laughs> and thank God I was stuck with him because uh, he suggested uh, I try the dog on a roof at the, uh, the the other location, and I went one time, and I'm not like those people. And it was, it was amazing. And, you know, the longer we stick around and the more people we run into that have this disease, it's, it's, it's just amazing. And I know I i was raised, my father died of this disease, and uh, I found out where he was hiding his bottles. Uh, I lived in the Midwest, so we had a basement. And I would sip on it, and one time I took a little more than I thought, and I thought, oh, I better fill this up with water. And until I got to AA, I thought I originated that <laughs> but as would be you know we hear our own story here over and over and over again and I can say my father died of this disease a small midwestern town he was a town drunk and I swore that I would never become a drunk and I didn't I became an alcoholic instead <laughs> and there is a definite difference an alcoholic has a higher class uh, <laughs> than a drunk. But I am so grateful to this uh, this fellowship, the 12 Steps, uh, giving me the courage to go out and do my thing because I was running scared most of my life. I was doing good. I had a job. I worked. And I 
earn plenty of money, but I was always looking over my shoulder because I was sure uh, they were out to get me. There was one occasion right here in uh, uh, Anaheim, I was working for a small company. I worked in the computer industry, and I was out to lunch with uh, a colleague, and he says, hey, let me be the first to congratulate you. I said, on what? He said, I hear you're up for promotion. My first thought was, uh, they found out. They're going to promote me above my capability and watch me fail. I left that job. <laughs> and it's, you know, looking back on some of those things is, is just amazing. And uh, today I am, I am so blessed. Uh, I was fortunate enough to retire six years ago, and, and uh, AA is my life today. I just found out about this meeting I, uh, last night at a meeting I was at. And I'm so grateful that uh, Bob over here and I decided, hey, let's give you a try. And I am so grateful to all of you for being here for me. Thank you. Next up, we have Mike F. with 30 years. Come on up, Mike. I call it, my name's Mike, and I was 17 days from being the baby here. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, I was sweating that. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here today, and uh, thank you for, uh, for allowing me to participate. Uh, this is the, the first, uh, my, of course, my first time to do this at a old timers convention, and at 54 years old, I, I did, and I didn't think I would live this long, much less be able to be sober 30 years. Um, I was like my friend before. I was, I was a, I was a a fallen down drunk. Um, Marine Corps sent us to me here. Um, Colonel thought it'd be a good idea if I got out of his out of his office and got into Alcoholics Anonymous uh, and couldn't didn't stay sober in AA for the first three and a half years. Had both ears at the time when I got here. I'm missing one now, um, and uh, a lot of more you know scars to prove that I that I qualify. And um, I know some newcomers in the room today and. I just want to tell you, you don't have to do it the hard way. You can do it the easy way. And that's, uh, you know, stay here with us. Easy does it, not heavy does it. And, um, and I'm, again, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Then we have Karen O.D. with 30 years. Come on up. Hi, my name's Karen, and I'm an alcoholic. And uh, who knew, who knew when I was a teenager and I was doing all that fun drinking that I would end up in here in this wonderful place. Um, I feel privileged to be here. You know, I used to think it was uh, a bad thing to be an alcoholic, and today I'm proud of it. And I don't care who knows it. My father came to Alcoholics Anonymous. When I was a teenager, and um, he stayed sober one year, and then he went out and drank until he died. So I knew that this was the last place I was going to come because it didn't save him, and uh, it didn't work. But when I got here and I had my first year, um, I was amazed that I had stayed sober that long, and I understood why. And it wasn't because alcoholics didn't work for my father. It's because he didn't work it. And I did, and I'm just grateful to be here. Thank you. Next, we have Lynn B. with 30 years. Good afternoon. My name is Lynn. I'm a free alcoholic. I'm powerless. It's good to be here. Thank you very much for putting this on. Uh, thanks, Frank, for letting me know. Frank called me up and uh, told me about this and says, hey, why don't you just join me? And it's tomorrow. I'm thinking about leaving about 10. And I'm, my first thought was, God, I hope I remember. 
I had that sometimers thing now. I don't remember all the time. Uh, anyway, um, it, right before I got to Alcoholics Anonymous, I was um, attending a drunk driving school, and I was on a court card, and I was still drinking. And uh, me and this gal got a little apartment, and I ended up moving right next door to Eddie Cochran. And he was the instructor at the drunk driving school I was attending. So I thought, oh, my God, they're following me now. And, uh, of course, I eventually got sober, and here I am, April 6, 1981. And uh, uh, I was just talking to a fellow the other night, uh, Saturday night, as a matter of fact, and he, um, we, we were talking about stuff that's happened to us in, in Alcoholics Anonymous over the years. And, and if I was a, a writer in Hollywood for movies, and I set the script down in my life, you'd say, what a fairy tale. What a fairy tale. That can't happen. That can't really happen, and especially someone like me. And, and it has. I, I'm, you know, you hear it all the time. I'm living beyond my wildest dreams. And, uh, you know, everything that's happened in my life is, is just unbelievable. Now, um, uh, I'll say this and, and shut up. My kids grew up in Alcoholics Anonymous. And when we'd go to birthday parties and they'd sing happy birthday to the kids, at the end of the song, they'd say, keep coming back without a drink. Work those steps. <laughs> Call your sponsor. And everyone would look and say, whose kids are these? <laughs> my son was playing my son was playing daddy with his nephew, or with my nephew, with his cousin. And um, uh, uh, my, my nephew grabbed a little lunch pail, and he says, well, he goes, I'm going to work. And my son looked around, and he says, well, I'm going to a meeting. <laughs> so they grew up in Alcoholics Anonymous. And now I have grandkids. I have grandkids. And what I ended up doing uh, uh, with the oldest is I started taking, I saw him catch his first fish. Five years old, I saw him catch. For a drunk like me, that ain't bad. For a drunk like me, that ain't bad. And uh, I'm just so very grateful. And uh, thank you very much. Next, we have Frank H. with 30 years. My name's Frank Hennessy. I'm an alcoholic. And uh, that newcomer friend of mine, my sobriety date April 1st, 1981. And it seems like 1981, a bunch of stubborn fools. We just don't die and don't drink. And look at us. You know, it's a lovely thing. I have a little history. That'll work, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, uh, I got a little history with Dog and Roof back when. I saw Ruben when he was brand new. I was, I hung out with these guys for about a year, I think it was. Went on a camp out and all. And, and uh, Back then, I was a little more judgmental than I am today, and I, you know, these guys are just rowdy and blah, 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 and they're all getting tattoos and shit, and it's like, oh, man, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. as we are when we're newer, and then I've learned acceptance over the time I've spent, and i got sleeves on both arms now, and just sold the street glide Harley Davidson I had, I'm waiting on the next bike, and uh, yeah, I kind of changed a little bit myself, so it's a... Uh, just be careful about what you say, because <laughs> you might have to carry it along with you. I'm really grateful you all put this on. It's great to see your lovely wife and yourself, Keith. I appreciate it very much. Next, we have Libby G. with 30 years. Hi, everybody. I'm Libby, and I'm an alcoholic. Hey. Hi. I'm just a falling down drunk. But for the grace of a power far greater than me, I've been clean and sober since March 9, 1981, and today I am so grateful. I'm grateful that 30 years ago I was desperate enough to do anything but go to AA, that I called the public radio sh talk show with a doctor of psychology, and I didn't tell anybody the truth. But that day I said, my name is Mary. I'm 27 years old, and I'm killing myself with alcohol and drugs. And I'll never forget this woman. She usually would hang up within a minute. She had everybody's answers. But I was fortunate because that day she told me about Alcoholics Anonymous, and she said that what I needed to do was to go to meetings for 30 days. And she obviously was missing what I was trying to tell her about all the horrible things that were happening in my life, so I filled her in. And then 
by, by the time we finished, we went through six months and a year. And at the very end of this conversation, she said, I want you to do nothing for one year. We go to meetings with Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'm grateful because had she said 30, 60, or 90 days, had we ended there, I would have missed the miracle of sobriety. And I just want to thank you for all the kindness this group has showed us. You're just amazing. Thank you. All the way from Oregon, Mary Ann, 30 years. My name is Mary Ann. I'm an alcoholic. And I want to tell you that I have been coming to this thing for a very long time to support my husband. <clears throat> and so I finally got 30 years last this February. So I said to Keith last year as I left, ta-da, I'm going to be able to talk next year. He said, oh, no, there's entirely too many of you. We're moving it up to 35 years. <laughs> so I've had this little resentment till just about a little bit ago. I've always been the ta-da girl. You know, I go with Otto and ta-da, go with John, ta-da. The keys, the drums, ta-da. And so I get to be my own ta-da today. So newcomers, keep coming back. The old timers, the things they've said to me when I was new, sober, and couldn't sleep, you know, and I used to take an old guy around. At 34 years, his name was John, and I'd take him so he could talk. And uh, I'm telling him one time on the way home, you know, I just can't sleep. We just eat. So he gets out of the car, and he turns around, and in that instant, he leans back in, and he says, sleep well, honey, God's awake. Always oh, those wonderful old timers, the graceful little things they told me, and I'm still here, a direct result of people like John that took two seconds to reach out. Love you. Keep coming back. And with 30 years, Jamaican Tony. Alcoholic. Yeah, I'm grateful to be here uh, today. Um, got here 30 years ago with no intention of staying, you know. Um, came here on a wife card, well, a girlfriend card, who later became my wife. And, um, you know, uh, I used to share this from the podium, and Chuck is not with us anymore. Um, I got sober, and she said, well, you know, I prefer you when you are drinking. And um, I told her I'll never go back to drinking for her or nobody else when I'm here today. So, you know, I want to encourage you to stay if you're new, and um, you'll have some time too. Thanks. All right, moving up to 31 years, Clem S. Come on up, Clem. There he is. Hello, everybody. My name is Clem. I'm an alcoholic. Wow. What a group. What a group. Uh, very succinctly, I came to Alcoholics Anonymous as a young 31-year-old Navy chief the weekend that they killed my commander-in-chief in November of 1963. Carted me, a guy carted me around for 30 days, said, if you don't like what we've got, you can go out and get drunk. He didn't show up that 31st day, and I did what any good drunk does. I went and celebrated that I could get sober by getting drunk. For the next 17 years, for you people that are having a tough time getting here, 17 years, I was in and out of AA, sober for six days, drunk, sober for six months, drunk, sober for three weeks, drunk, because you didn't have the problems that I had. You didn't have the wife that I had. You didn't have the job that I had, you know. It wasn't until a nut house, the Philadelphia Navy Hospital Psychiatric Ward, uh, and two of those spin dries in the 70s that uh, the miracle of, of sobriety was given to me, and I accepted it on July the 2nd, the same day as my friend Al, only a year before, on 1980. Uh, I'm truly grateful to Bill and Bob for finding what they did and being able to pass this 
this wonderful way of life onto me. Today, I'm the richest man in the world, not in money, but in friends and people in my life. And that's what's so important to me, and I hope to all of you, too. I'm just grateful to Alcoholics Anonymous, and that, this is such a wonderful occasion. I've never seen anything like this before. Thanks so much. And with 31 years, Grant S. Oh, I guess. Grant. Good afternoon. I'm an alcoholic, and the unresolved problem is Grant. Wow. I was here last year, and the light went on, the bell went off, and I almost soiled my trousers. I didn't know what all the excitement was. I want to welcome the newcomers. You're a stranger here but once. I want to thank uh, Keith and his wife, Sue, for a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. And you know where this thing up here says, get her done? I've always admired that sign because I know it took Reuben and Paul and their disciples to get this all together. And the ladies have done a fantastic job. You know, just to come up here and spend lunchtime on uh, Labor Day is, is a wonderful feeling. I'm out there gathering drunks up as I'm driving up the road. My phone's ringing. They want to know where I'm going. I said, I'm going to a meeting. And they said, well, can I go? And I said, sure, I'll be by to get you. And just as I drove by this place, I was listening to my voicemail. It says, I'm at Panera's down there on the Miracle Mile in beautiful Costa Mesa. Sure enough, there I said, meet me out in front. I got him, and then I went over and got Steve J., who's, uh, his hobby is gardening now. It used to be drinking, and we shook him out real good and put him to work at Charlie Street. He's learned a brand new trade, from a builder to a gardener, and he's doing one fine job, staying sober. And last year when we came up, Steve had about, what, six, eight months, and and today, uh, I know the dog on the roof is real proud of him because he walks tall today, and he's sober, and that's what this thing is all about. So if you're new or relatively new, I really beg you to give this a chance. Uh, there's only one thing that I've learned here in 31 years, actually two things. There is a God, and I am not He. So trust in God, clean house, and help others, and the bonus and the big payday is helping others. And I think... Just looking around, Keith can stand here and be real proud, and Sue, for what they've created in getting us all off our duffs and being of service. It's a great life. Enjoy it. God bless. And Gil G. with 32 years. My name is Gil Gagnon, and I am an alcoholic. Yeah, it's good to be here again. Uh, and it was interesting. I was, I was driving in. I was thinking, you know, what the hell do you say to all these people that got so much more time than you? You know, I feel like a freaking newcomer again in here. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I realized that, you know, the only message that I can ever carry is that somehow through the miracle of Alcoholics Anonymous and God and this program and you guys, uh, I haven't had a drink since June 10th, 1979. And for those of you who are fairly new, that is also Alcoholics Anonymous birthday. And I didn't pick that day. That was the day that they uh, kicked me out of the mental institution, so I figured that was a good day to start sobriety. Uh, but I was reading an article this morning, and it touched me quite a bit because it, re it kind of paralleled what I perceive in Alcoholics Anonymous. And it was an article in the L.A. Times about Reggie Willits, this ball player for the Angels. And he got drafted by the Angels in, uh, about eight years ago. And I thought, well, okay, I got drafted by you guys about 30 years, 32 years ago. And uh, and he's been up and down the minor leagues and back up to the pros and down to the minor leagues and banging around city to city, whatever. And he just keeps doing it because he loves what he's doing. And my first thought was, yeah, I love what I've become and what Alcoholics Anonymous has done for me and done to me. But I just keep banging around here, up, down, sideways, whatever. And... Uh, and he has no desire to go anyplace else. He doesn't know if he's going to end up someplace else, but he has no desire to go anyplace else. And since the days, since I kind of got to the realization that this is what I wanted out of life uh, at the age of 31, I have not wanted this. I haven't sought anything else. A little psychiatric help here and there might, you know, didn't hurt. But <laughs> bottom line is, is I found in here what I didn't know that I was actually looking for 
all the time I was out there. And it's kind of a peace and serenity. And uh, and then the one thing that really, really has is, is gotten to me, and especially in the last couple few years, is that my calendar absolutely does not coincide with God's. Uh, I came in here and not knowing I was an alcoholic, same as most people, you know, I didn't know if I wanted this thing, didn't know why I was even here, you know. Looked around, I was too young until I met the dog on the roof guys over at Big Book, and I said, no, maybe I'm not too young. And uh, and I just kind of, you know, just kind of banging around, and uh, God's timing is absolutely perfect. Uh, Libby's my wife, and we've been married 29 years in November. And uh, and I'm one of those guys that when I got uh, got to here, I had a had a real problem. I didn't know how to date, didn't know how to treat women. Uh, you guys taught me how to do that. She became my best friend only because I got delegated to be a driver for her because she didn't they didn't have a car and I lived close enough to give her a ride to meetings and two years later we were married um, and so I married my best friend and uh, and we would uh, you know just recently we uh, we went through a financial thing and after 20 and a half years of, of marriage and renting we actually were able to buy our first place it may take a while folks You newcomers that are sitting around here, don't give up five minutes before any miracle. Thanks. Next up with 32 years, Mike C. I'm Mike. I'm an alcoholic. I'm going to make this brief. Last year they had to put the hook on me. That won't happen again. Um, I uh, <clears throat> I was five years between my first and second meetings. Uh, my first meeting, all I heard was the drunkologue, compared mine to the speakers, and uh, all I would was a lawn parking bedwetter, and I was embarrassed to be in the room with that speaker who had been in state prison, killed somebody, was a heroin addict, and I went out to work on my story. And... When I got back five years later, I was, uh, that's incomprehensible immoralization. That's what we share with everybody. I'm going to go to a retreat in uh, two weeks. I do every year with the uh, group from Los Amigos. And one of the main guys there, one thing he says, there's no tough guys in AA. You can forget all that crap. You can come in here and be yourself and don't worry about it. Uh, you know, I... Uh, Came down here today with a couple of my good friends and Ron's PT Cruiser, the little joy bus, and it's just full of love and all that bullshit. We uh, we made the mistake, and it's right in that little blue knockoff of the big book on your table. It talks about staying out of government affairs. Somebody brought up politics and stuff, and that car was full of hate, like in a heartbeat, but... Anyways, you know, I've got a very rigid program. I don't recommend that. I go to a 12 and 12 meeting. I go to a participation meeting. I've got a panel at Patton Hospital I've had for almost 30 years. And I want to add this to part of my program. I love you guys. Thanks. All right, moving up to 33 years, Art S. Come on up. Yeah, my name's Art, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm uh, extremely grateful that I was lucky enough to end up here in Alcoholics Anonymous. The path I was taking, I probably ended up in Folsom or on death row or something. I mean, I was on a weird path, but uh, sobriety's been a trip. I've learned a lot of things since I've been here, you know. I learned, I found out who the problem was, you know. And uh, I love this program. I have all my friends today are in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. And it's been a hell of a ride, but I'm still here anyway. Thank you. All right, kicking off the 34 crew, Jim L. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Jim. I'm an alcoholic. And, uh, I made it all the way up here, but uh, anyway, uh, I'd like to thank Keith and, and Sue and uh, Doggone and Rook guys. I, we're treated like royalty when we come here. What a what a beautiful club, and uh, th I mean, this is really sobriety here. Man, this is, uh, I'm part of the Chino uh, men's stag on Wednesday night, and there's a lot of us out here, and uh, <clears throat> I'd like to do something special. Uh, I'm going to embarrass these two people, but I'd like to introduce Mark and Susan. They just got married here about a month ago. Stand up. Stand up, you guys. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, anyway, congratulations, you two. And, uh, uh, yeah. Mark, yeah, now that I embarrass you, but, uh, uh, and, uh, John is our, he's our sort of our, our, our retreat. <laughs> They're still holding hands. And, uh, they, I, I love that. I, I, that's the result of Alcoholics Anonymous. I was an Anaheim Street drinker for 20 some years from Anaheim Street to, I guess, Anaheim. That's funny because I came with Liz, a member of our club in, in Chino. And my wife is over here about a mile at her daughter's house babysitting her two grandkids. And uh, they're two years old and five years old. And when I got here, that same wife was locking me out of the house and uh, hiding her purse, hiding her car keys. And when I got home, our daughter was probably, she'll be 36 in October. She was probably a year and a half year old. And she was taking that kid off to her sister's house. I did not. She did not want to be around me at all, and today I can be here with the, I mean, what a deal we got. I mean, just for the newcomers, just just keep coming back at work, just provide ourselves, you know. I kind of miss the entertainment for Sue's and Keith's birthday. I see the ladies over, what a terrific show. I mean, that, I mean, that was great for their birthday. I, I just love that stuff. And, uh, when I got here, I, like I say, I was an Anaheim Street drinker in those dark old bars down there, and... Uh, I don't want to forget that, certainly. We don't want to forget our past, but uh, I got such a good life today that uh, newcomers just keep coming back. I could have never got up here before 30-some years ago. I've been scared to death, and today I'm not as afraid as I was, uh, only because of Alcoholics Anonymous. What a deal we got. Man, thanks, Ruben. Thank you, sir. Lauren, with 34 years. I'm Lauren, Lauren Ebel, and I'm an alcoholic. And this year, you really outdid yourselves. I am uh, really grateful for this program, you know. I remember in one of my earliest meetings, they said, uh, around here, you're going to have the most fun you ever had and still have your clothes on. And uh, I found that to be true. And, uh, you know, it's been a hell of a ride and a real adventure. And, uh, you know, this year, I... Uh, January, uh, June 22nd, Mark 34, and I was at uh, 502 and I took my cake and uh, Mac B was there. I don't see him here today, but I asked him if I could get, uh, if I could get him to give him my cake and he can sit in there up there by the front and he had oxygen on and he kind of smiled or something, got got ready and anyway he, uh, at that meeting uh, whoever gives you the cake speaks and Mac said uh, gave me my cake and then he got up and he talked for me uh, I don't know which one of us was moved the most you know I really don't but uh, he was really pleased or thrilled that I asked him to do that you know and I met Mac very early on when I first came on the program and he was one that helped me get started in here in many ways a lot of other people, you know, Curtis Larkin was one, and Taylor, we lost him here recently, but people like that is what kept me coming back, and uh, this is the wildest life I could ever dream of. I'd like to thank you all for helping me. Ron S. for 34 years. Hi, everyone. My name is Ron Seeker. I'm an alcoholic. And I'd like to thank uh, Keith and, and Sue and all the people that put this on. That's uh, 
it's a big job, and, and I appreciate it. You know, uh, Keith has shown me some pictures of his before he reached the program here, and it looks something like out of a movie set, you know. It looked like a, a, the, the Mexican mafia against the wall with his big buckle, and and um, and he was he was running cocaine out of Mexico, and uh, you know my thing was 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 alcohol. I tried cocaine a couple times, and I didn't care too much for it. I liked the way it smelled, but uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, You know uh, how an alcoholic thinks he analyzes everything? Well, I was trying to think how they positioned people when they were coming in here. And then my analytical mind told me I would see the first table with Otto and John Keefe and Keith. And then it, and Kramer, of course, over here. And then it flashed to me. They seated you according to the ultimate record of sickness of being in this program. So... I'm thinking, you know, I have 34 years. This guy has 50 years old. Keith has a lot more time. But it just flashed to me that probably we sent a um, a president for the the sickest people that ever entered AA that made the program for a nearly the time. So I've heard that, you know, uh, in the past that one out of every third person is mentally unbalanced. So if you look at the person to your left, and then look at the person to your right, and if they appear to be all right, guess who's it? Thank you. <laughs> uh, Joe T. with 34 years. German Joe, come on up. Joe Tillman, grateful alcoholic. Uh, what a deal that is. Today is a special day for me, too, because I had my grandson here for the very first time in a meeting. I'm very proud of you, Josh. About a year ago, I was up in Idaho. I introduced myself. I always said, I'm grateful to be an alcoholic. Way up in the corner, guy said, how can anybody be grateful to be an alcoholic? So I talked to you after the meeting. If I wouldn't have found Alcoholics Anonymous, I wouldn't be here. I had to be hospitalized. The doctor looked at me. First thing he said, told the nurse, go get the chaplain over here, give him the last rites. See, I wasn't that bad yet. That's what I thought. After the chaplain came over, I said, Joe, I want to pray with you. At that moment, my mind was clear as it can be. I didn't have anything left. I tell my father, I don't know how, because I've been going to church all my life. All of a sudden, I was blank. I said, it's okay, I pray for you. I oh, am yeah, here again for 34 years later. I will be so grateful to all of you to be here for me. Bill C., with 34 years. <laughs> my name is Bill Cody. I'm an alcoholic. And my name's in the phone book. I live in Covina, but you ain't going to call, you know. <laughs> and I want to thank uh, Sue and Keith, too, and uh, the dog on the roof, both the AAs and the Al Anons. I really appreciate it. And, uh, they're, they're actually special in my life, but they don't necessarily know that they are. And, uh, and this group is too, and, and uh, uh, I'm glad you're here, and I'm and I'm sure glad I'm here. You know, I wasn't all there for a long time. They had a little thing. I'm a grapevine reader, and they had a little thing in a grapevine that said that uh, a pessimist is a, what is it half full, and an optimist is half empty, and an alcoholic says, "Are you going to drink that?" You know that. <laughs> that's how I am. Uh, are you going to drink it? You know, and uh, so. I knew I was an alcoholic before I got to AA for some reason, and uh, that's just how I was. And uh, if you wanted to run with me, it was fine. If you didn't, I didn't care. It didn't make any difference as long as I could drink, you know. 
And I came here, and uh, uh, Phil Turner is my sponsor, and still is today, and Big Book Mac is my second sponsor, and God bless him. And, uh, I, uh, I miss him, and uh, I miss Harvey. Curtis and Harvey, uh, I came with them to the first time that I came to this meeting when it was in Fullerton, and uh, what a, that's a memorable thing for me, and uh, and so is uh, just just keep coming back. God, I hope you read the big book and get a sponsor and do what you're supposed to do, but... Uh, and if you don't, God dang, just keep coming back. Thanks. Jim B. with 34 years. I'm Jim and I'm not a yeah. I want to thank Keith and Sue for putting this on and all the people of service that served us and, and took care of us. You know, that's how I came in. I came in, first thing my sponsor said is you're going to go over there and clean the ashtrays. And the floor is dirty, and you're going to wash the floor after everybody leaves. And I did that for a long time, and it kept me sober. So I'll be indebted you know, to service. If you're new, you know, I hope you keep coming back. I hope you, you hear what we say. We don't say it to impress you. We say it that you don't have to go through some of the things that we had to go through that got here at a... At a, at a, at a later date, you know. Um, I just told this couple here it works, <clears throat> and the reason is, is because my wife and I have been married for 37 years, and uh, that's not a miracle, but uh, I've been married five times, <clears throat> and only because of Alcoholics Anonymous, her and I are still together. Uh, I love what the man said about the grandkids and the daughters and all that, you know. My granddaughter was brought up in Alcoholics Anonymous. I thank you people for allowing her to have two children. That's how it works. That's it. That's the whole program for me. I, um, when I came here, I was a thief. And, uh, you know, I stole a lot of things. And there's a guy that's, that's been around for a long time. He said that he was overpaid. And uh, I always use that, you know, when I talk. That I am overpaid. Some bad things can happen to you in alcohol, synonymous. The miracle is that we don't have to drink. I guess somebody like John or Art or Phil or Terry or anybody in this room I can go to and talk a lot with them. I don't have to drink today. And that's what it's about. That's the miracle. Thank you for all being here. Thank you. And Marilyn B. with 34 years. I'm Marilyn, and I'm alcoholic, and I have to do a little rebuttal. We've only been married 30, almost 35 years. We've been together 37. Um, had we not both got sober, we probably wouldn't be together, I'm relatively certain. As he said, I'm his fifth wife, and he's my third husband. So we knew that one of us had real good track records, at least not while we were drinking. Uh, I'm very grateful to this program. Uh, like I say, I don't know what, where we would be if it hadn't been for that. I was primarily a bar drinker, so if we weren't at the bar, I wasn't drinking, so I was kind of, but I really did more than my share. I got my 502 and my reckless and all that good stuff, kids, all kinds of things. And um, just really grateful to this program. It's pulled us through some tough times. Uh, Jim had both heart, open heart surgery and lung cancer surgery last year. His doctor calls him Superman because he's still working and stuff, and he's doing so good. And we're just grateful. We know it's this program, and it's know it's God. Uh, he goes to more meetings than I do. I go to church, and he doesn't. So we both have our support groups. I'm fortunate I have two support groups, AA and my church people. I'm just really grateful to this program. I uh, kind of grew up with it. I grew up with the serenity prayer on the refrigerator. My dad went to... Uh, AA meetings in the late 40s in the Manhattan Beach and South Bay area. You probably knew Chuck C. I don't know. Uh, he didn't continue to go to AA, but he did continue to stay sober. And so I always knew about Alcoholics Anonymous, but I didn't think of myself as an alcoholic because I didn't have to have the first drink. I could go places where there wasn't drinking, but I didn't know when to quit when I started because I liked the taste. And if one tastes good, it doesn't taste better. And um, so I got the results. And it took me a while to decide that I was an alcoholic. And uh, 
I'm glad I am, like the man said. You know, it's, if I'm going to have a disease, this is the one to have because it's treatable. You know, it's a self-inflicted and self-treated, along with God and all of you people. Thank you. And then we have Verna S. for 34 years. Verna. I grew up with a lot of people in the room. I'm sorry to be so emotional, but <clears throat> uh, my family was agnostics and uh, atheists, so there wasn't any God. And uh, <clears throat> I, I liked to drink in bars and pretty much followed, you know, looking for where it was happening. I just went from one place to another, and finally my dad bought me a great big bar so I'd stay home, <clears throat> and I brought people in. And when I, I didn't want to be here at AA, and this is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I have a boy at home that's uh, been drinking alcoholically since he was 21. Actually, he started at 15. He's 44, and uh, he detoxed himself this week and almost killed himself. I mean, honestly, I had to, the paramedics had to come in and get him because he quit breathing, <clears throat> and his heart stopped. And uh, this morning, I was in a real happy mood, and he said, where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm going to go to an old-timers meeting. And he said, I just fucking can't understand what you see there. He goes to meetings, and it has not hit his heart. Uh, I don't know. He just feels angry. So... Uh, there's a lot of people in this group that I've virtually grown up with in Alcoholics Anonymous, and some of us have a little bit different time, and it's because some of us came in slower than others, and uh, there's people in this room that I've heard them say, fuck AA, and now they have over 30 years. <clears throat> so I, I love this club. I think you guys are a class act. Even the ladies' restroom is out of this world. There's, there's actual towels to wipe your hands on, and there's a butterfly and nobody's pissed all over the seat. <laughs> mm -hmm. True. And when I sneak outside uh, to have a cigarette, there's a long line of young girls out there. I have no idea what kind of sobriety they have. It could be between 5 and 20 years. Now sometimes people look like babies and they have 20 years. But they found a lighter for me, and uh, th there has been nothing but hospitality in this building. And I've actually been real happy. I've been sitting in between Art and Bill Coday, and I felt real humor is usually the thing I like the best in AA and in myself. And today I am just really grateful because I probably wouldn't even got to see this kid halfway die this week if I hadn't have, uh, joined this program. I would go through anything to be here. I've been at an Alcathon for two days prior to this one and two old-timer meetings before this one. And when I had, uh, they told me that old-timers had to have 20 years. So when I had 19, I was all excited. When I turned 20 at Covina, they changed it to 25. So then I worked real hard to get to 25. They changed it to 30. So I finally got to go with last year here with, what would I have last year? That's how much I'm on. Goodbye. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kicking off the 35 crew, Keith. Uh, May I call it Keith? Yeah. May 11th, 76. I'm grateful for that. I uh, uh, thank you for uh, thanking Sue and I for doing this. It really and truly, the people that know me, and there's several people saw me come in and said, this is an amends. It really is an amends because when I was new and I had a bunch of newcomers, when we sat around and judged the old tyrant, that, look at that asshole, look at that, that's a bunch of crap. We wrote in our book, this is bullshit. And, and as we stayed sober and changed, why we, we decided maybe we should make some amends to these people. And... Uh, and so, really, that's why we do this, and it is a form of amends. And we, we, I want to acknowledge Tim and his crew. These guys are from South County. A bunch of people from different groups have come here to uh, celebrate uh, the unity of the old timers. It's fantastic. And you know, the thing of it is, when we first started this, we we had people from Upland and all out there that came over, and uh, 
And now there's people from Orange County coming to it. Welcome. Thank you for coming from Orange County to our, the Old Timer Committee. This is not a special interest group. This is really Keith and Sue making amends to Alcoholics Anonymous for the way we acted in sobriety. Really, 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 really. And, and there's people uh, from different groups that we went to, and uh, I used to take a bunch of these guys, and they had switchblade knives, and they'd uh, play with them during the meetings and play with each other during the meetings and, and uh, play with anybody else they could during the meetings. And and, uh, and I, it's really beautiful, really beautiful. And, and Steve Jackson was here drunk. I mean, he was drunk over here, and Lemke was puking on Lemke and 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 Lemke <laughs> asked him, he says, do you eat, do you put food in that mouth? <laughs> well, yeah, he said, well, I, I'm surprised for all the vile crap that's coming out of it talking to me, you know. And, and Jackson's sober, a year and a half, see. I mean, it's just great stuff. It's enlightenment, enlightenment. Really, is. some of these guys over here from South County and Govina, God bless you. Thank you for coming so that these people can have some enlightenment on sobriety. Enlightenment. And, and the best thing is there's people, Shirley and Mario and, and uh, several other people saw me when I was new. So, you know, that, that verifies I'm sober today, continuously, one day at a time for 35 years. God bless and thank you. And with 35 years, Shane P. grateful recovering alcoholic. My name is Shane. And like Bernie said, I have a lot of friends in this room that uh, I've grown up with over the past 30 years, and I've developed a very strong and deep relationship with them, a friendship. And uh, But that doesn't quite describe it. In the Gaelic language, they have something called Anamkara, which translates into English as soul friends. And I think that's what I've developed over these past 35 years is soul friends. Because we've, we've seen each other go through so much, and we've helped each other, and you know, it's, it's just an incredible friendship that I think will last past this lifetime. In a book called Came to Believe, Chapter 5, and also in the grapevine, uh, Bill, um, there's a quote from Bill W. He says, Is sobriety all we are to expect? And Bill W. said, no, sobriety is but the first gift of the first spiritual awakening. If you want the other spiritual awakenings, the other gifts, you have to do what's necessary to move forward in your sobriety. And with me, with almost 36 years of sobriety, I can honestly tell you, I'm just beginning to scratch the surface of what this program has to offer in the way of helping me to change. One last thing. Um, I want to thank the people that invited me down here and included me in your celebration because a hoodlum from the Bronx like me, you know, I shouldn't be here. So thank you for being my friend. Tony M. with 35 years. I'm an alcoholic. I've been sort of laughing at myself and thinking, you know what? I've seen a lot of men with gray hair, and then I've seen some with little hair, and then I've seen with some with no hair. I'm sitting there thinking, I bet you guys are probably thinking I'm using that, that, that wash for men. This is still my same color of hair. Still got my teeth. And the reason why I still look good is due to a lot of beans and rice in Jesus Christ. You know, it's been a good ride here. And uh, my sobriety date is October the 7th, 1975. When I got to Alcoholics Anonymous, it was at the end of the second edition. Five months later, you know, they came out with the, the third edition. Twenty-five years later, they came out with the fourth edition. So I've been able to make some history. And it's good to see Art Sanchez. He's always kicked me in the butt. Of everybody, Art, man, he's, he's a trip. I'm not very liked in meetings. I'd already come out to me. As soon as I walk in a meeting, okay, Tony, be nice now. Don't be tough with these people, man. I'll always remember Art's words. 
And then people tell me, man, Tony, I wish I was, I wish I would have came in when I was your age. I was 26 when I got here. You know, I just didn't wake up and say, you know, you guys, everything is so great. You know, the sun is shining and the birds are chirping and the bills are paid. I think I'll join AA. I don't think that, that's not the way it happened. I got, I'm a skid row product. I came out of the bushes of 5th and Central. I was sitting on the corner of 5th Street one day and somebody came out to me and said, hey, Tony, want to get a room? I'm looking around for a wallet. I don't even have any money. The guy said, I didn't ask you I had any money, man. I got a card here we can use. So I got up and walked across the street and went to inside of a big old high-rise building, sat there, and the guy did some talking. And five minutes later, come on in. Gave us three bed sheets, a name tag, went in. I'm thinking I'm really getting to get three hats and a cot here. But then after I was there, I thought to myself, but I don't belong here. You know, I'm not like these people. I'm only going to stay here for three hats and a cot, and I'm going to go back to Baldwin Park. Anyway, I ended up staying there for three years. And the place is better known as the Salvation Army Harbor Light Center, 809 East 5th Street in downtown Los Angeles. And it's been a blessing because I've been here ever since. And uh, coming in the rooms, I used to think sometimes I was in a senior citizen's building. I mean, everybody really, when I was 26, back then, they were old and on wheelchairs and decrepit and bald. And, and to myself, I would think, well, shoot, what are these people doing drink? Look how old they are. All they got left is bingo and smoke filled rooms and coffee. You know, and here I am today, an old timer. And it's, and it's a blessing too because I love 1970 because nobody ever can accord to me and said, Pobrecito, it's okay to have 300 newcomer chips. <laughs> I mean, these people look like my grandfather. I was afraid to say something because they were telling me, you know what, man? You know, there's only one thing you've got to change, son. I said, yeah, what's that? One thing, that's pretty cool. What is that? You've got to change your playmates. You've got to change your playthings. You've got to change your playgrounds. The way you walk and the way you talk, you're not in East L.A. and you're not in the county, you're not Alcoholics Anonymous. And so I've really been able to change. I've been able to keep my same sobriety date. I just turned 62, and uh, next month I'll celebrate 36 years. And what a blessing. God has given me, you know, another day of, of sobriety. Thank you for letting me share. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.